Let's balance the equation for K2S plus ZnNO3 2. We have potassium sulfide and we have zinc nitrate. So the first thing we'll do, this is a double displacement reaction. We're going to count the atoms up on each side. We'll use a little bit of a trick that'll help make it easier. And this is one you can use on most double displacement reactions if they have polyatomic ions. So let's count the atoms up. Two potassium atoms, one sulfide, one zinc. And then the nitrate here, we have a nitrate here and here. And since we have it on both sides, we can count it as one thing. So we have one nitrate times two. That gives us two of these nitrate ions. Product side, one potassium, one sulfur, one zinc, and then just one nitrate ion. So this makes it a lot neater, and you get the same answer either way. It looks like all I need to do is if I put a coefficient of two in front of the potassium nitrate, I'll have one times two, that balances the potassiums, and then I have one nitrate times two, that balances the nitrates, we're done. This equation is balanced. So that's very useful. If you have a polyatomic ion that shows up on both sides, just count it as one thing. If you want to write the states, potassium compounds are very soluble. So we'll write AQ for aqueous after each of those. Nitrates, very soluble. That'll also be aqueous. But that zinc sulfide, in general, sulfides are insoluble unless they're bonded to something like potassium or sodium in group one on the periodic table. So this is going to be a solid. And what that means is it's going to fall to the bottom of the test tube as a precipitate. So we have these two reacting, and we have this precipitate here fall to the bottom of the test tube. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for K2S plus ZnNO32. Thanks for watching.